So uh, let me get a little bit more specific about what we mean by nodal plane and where the idea of nodal plane comes from. And nodal planes arise from any place you have angular nodes. So we talked about radial nodes when we were doing these radial probability uh, density diagrams here. You can also have angular nodes. And when we talk about an angular node, what we're talking about is values of theta or values of phi at which the wave function and therefore the wave function squared or the probability density are going to be equal to zero. So you remember from last time, radial nodes are values of r at which the wave function and wave function squared are zero. So the difference is now we're just talking about the angular part of the wave function. And in fact, these are the only two types of nodes that we're going to be describing. So we can actually calculate both the total number of nodes and the number of each type of node we should expect to see in any type of orbital. And our equation for total nodes is just the principal quantum number minus one. And when we talk about angular nodes, the number of angular nodes we have in an orbital is going to be equal to L. So that's why we saw, for example, uh, in the p orbitals, we had one angular node in each p orbital because L is equal to one there. And we talked about the equation you can use for radial nodes last time, and that's just n minus one minus L. You can go ahead and use that equation, or you could figure it out every time, because if you know the total number of nodes and you know the angular node number, then you know how many nodes you're going to have left. So you don't really have to memorize that. So let's go ahead and just do a few of these. They're pretty straightforward to do, and it gives us an idea of what kind of nodal structure we can expect in an orbital. So for a 2s orbital, how many total nodes will we have? Yep, I heard one. So two minus one, one total node. Angular nodes, we're not going to have any of those. We'll have zero. L equals zero, so we have zero angular nodes. And in terms of radial nodes, we have two minus one minus zero, so what we have is one radial node. So what you find with the s orbital, and this is general for all s orbitals, is that all of your nodes end up being radial nodes. That has to be the case because L equals zero for s orbitals. Let's look now at a p orbital. So how many total nodes do we have here? Yep, so one total node, two minus one is one. And that means since uh, L is equal to one, we have one angular node. And that leaves us with how many radial nodes? Yep, zero radial nodes. So for a 2p orbital, all the nodes actually turn out to be angular nodes. So let's have you try one more, if we can switch over uh, and talk about a 3d orbital. So I'm asking very specifically about radial nodes here. How many radial nodes does a hydrogen atom 3d orbital have? So you can go ahead and take 10 seconds on that. All right, so uh, most of you got that, though there's this little subset we have thinking that we have one, so let's actually uh, write this out here. So if we have a 3D orbital, we're talking about n minus l minus 1. What is n equal to? What is l equal to? OK. And 1 is equal to 1. So it turns out that we have zero uh, nodes that we're dealing with when we're talking about a 3D orbital.